Hello, our valuable viewers. It is useful to listen to our videos until the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with our new videos. Let's go to our topic. For Audi, one of just two automakers still mass producing the V10, the 2023 Audi R8 GT is a watershed moment in history. The V10 has been a rare and enduring moment of emotion for the German brand that has often been criticized for being too clinical and cold in how it engineers its vehicles, and the R8 in which it has been housed has been a class-redefining supercar that not only stunned visually in every incarnation, but gave new meaning to the phrase everyday supercar. But the R8 is not long for this world and neither is the V10 that powers it, and the R8 GT is the final farewell to two automotive icons. With this information looming menacingly, Audi sent Carbus to Seville, Spain to get acquainted with one of the world's last road-going V10 supercars at the Circuito Monteblanco. The 2023 R8 GT, in case you missed the details before, revives the GT suffix for the first time since the first generation in 2010. In this final iteration, the R8 becomes a rear-wheel drive-only supercar with outputs dialed up to 602 horsepower and 413 pounds FT of torque and its transmission, suspension, and aerodynamics turned up to 11. It sheds weight to 55 pounds of the stuff compared to the lesser RWD R8 thanks to a diet that affects the interior, exterior, and even under the skin. Just 333 will be built, resulting in a car as exclusive as it is special. A fitting farewell, then. We took to the track to find out. Powertrain, a 10-cylinder symphony. Before we delve into the details of how it drives, we must first look at the differences between the R8 GT and its stablemates. Arguably most important is the powertrain, where Audi has turned up the wick on the 5.2-liter naturally aspirated V10. 602 HP in the US might seem down compared to the European claims of 620 metric horsepower, but it's no typo, just a culmination of conversions, measurement methods and differences between the two regions. What's important is that the R8 GT is the most powerful RWD Audi ever made, and it has as much power as the regular R8 V10 Performance Quadro, just sent to two fewer driven wheels. Higher in the X sedan range is the more powerful X504 Matic model. At the top of the X line is the Mercedes AMG X, which offers up to 677 HP from two motors. Back on Earth, the IC 354 Matic model makes 288 HP and 564 pounds FT of torque figures that sound like an upgrade over the less powerful E350, but the electric Mercedes weighs 1,400 pounds more. Despite that heavy truth, the IC 354 Matic manages to match an E454 Matic in 030 mph acceleration 1.6 seconds and on to a 5.2 second 0 to 60 time. That's not bad for a modern luxury car, but the dual-motor G80 electric smokes it. The Genesis only needs 4.1 seconds to reach 60. The G80 is also slightly quicker to charge, with a 187 kW peak charge rate on a DC charger compared to the IC 354 Matic's 170 kW rate. You won't notice this when you charge at home overnight, but on a road trip we'll take any quick charging advantage we can get. Every upshift rattled off by the DCT, whether of the car's own accord or a prompt of the tactile shift paddles behind the steering wheel is accompanied by a buck and a kick in the kidneys, perhaps a little more vicious than is absolutely necessary, but strong enough to enhance the theater of the occasion. But these days, anything is quick in a straight line. It's when you drop anchors and the fixed aluminum brake calipers clamp down on the 15-inch front and 14-inch rear carbon ceramic rotors that the speed becomes apparent. The stopper sheds speed at a rapid rate, and the brake pedal provides a fair chunk of feedback as to the grip on hand, but even the sticky Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 Summer Rubber can't defy physics if you come in too hot. A telltale pair of black stripes left by one of my industry colleagues a few days prior serves as a warning no more than a few corners in. Tip the Alcantara-clad steering wheel which feels sublime in hand and towards the apex of a corner and there's a surprising amount of feedback for a car without the weight of an engine over the front axle. The variable ratio steering rack adjusts the level of assistance based on your speed, 
but the system has improved from the early days when such setups were frowned upon. In controlled circumstances, I never once felt unable to read what the front end was doing. Adhesion levels are high, with a nose that doesn't push wide easily, and a sense of where the limits of grip are telegraphed strongly to my fingertips. Much credit deserves to be placed on the Michelin rubber, as a set of Pilot Sport 4S shoes used on the drift pad later in the day yielded far more understeer than the Cup 2s the car ships with, as the Cup 2s manage even the slightly damp conditions with aplomb. When challenged by uneven or poorly maintained road surfaces, the IC 350 also failed to live up to the IC S hatch's very high ride quality standard. Then again, maybe comparing the IC dynamics to the IC S is unfair, so let's compare apples to similarly priced apples. When driven around the same motor trend figure 8 course, the G80 electric felt quite well composed for a gas engine car converted to a full EV. As for the IC 350, it also felt heavy but this wasn't a positive. We noted its mushy brake pedal as well as gooey and imprecise steering. Unlike the E-Class, which beautifully balances luxury and sport in E450 form, the IC 350 is all in on a luxury first focus. That's fine, but the experience wasn't as sparkling as we'd like. One bright spot is the rear axle steering system technology we've seen on other Mercedes cars too. On the IC 350, it has the same effect. It makes the car feel more maneuverable thanks to the rear wheel's ability to rotate in the opposite direction to the fronts at low speeds. Our test car had the 10-degree version of the feature, a less extreme 4.5-degree system is also available. Beautiful interior, but a few misses. Our Pinnacle Trim 2023 Mercedes IC 350 made a stunning first impression inside. Before some of us realized how the car's high cowl limited outward visibility, we loved the beautiful combination of light brown seats, beige upper dash, and gray-brown matte wood trim. Also, the turbine-style outer air vents are that's too bad as the 2023 Mercedes IC 350 brings down the cost of a non-SUV electric Mercedes compared to the IC S four-door. The IC 350 lacks the acceleration of the single-spec G80 electric but the Mercedes is quick enough, and it's backed by a long-standing brand many trust. But there are too many compromises for us to recommend it the way we did the E-Class two years ago. The 2023 Mercedes IC 350 lacks that car's dynamic versatility, and at $93,640 as tested, it isn't a perfect midsize luxury sedan. Still, the E-Class wasn't perfect out of the box, either. We hope the rest of Mercedes' IC lineup improves on the 350's basics.
Interior Design, The Carbon Connection The carbon festooned exterior doesn't stand in isolation as the R8 GT's cabin is well decorated with the six, element in woven form. Decor elements on the center console, air vents and around the digital instrument cluster are made of the stuff offset by red contrast stitching throughout the cabin and red seat belts. Everywhere you look Alcantara and Dynamica are present, including the steering wheel which features a red 12 o'clock marker and bespoke controls for the torque rear mode. The R8 GT bucket seats are upholstered in leather and Dynamica. The fixed back and manual adjustment won't suit all body types, but it saves weight and provides bucket loads of support when cornering under duress. The seats and the floor mats feature R8 GT lettering, while a small RWD plaque is inlaid on the passenger side of the dash. Denoting its exclusivity, the center console bears the number out of 333 of the car you purchase. U.S. models again differ from their international counterparts here, with a standard bang and a Lufsen sound system for when by some madness you deem a screaming V10 not to be entertaining enough and the Audi exclusive diamond stitched headliner dot price and availability, exclusivity guaranteed. With only 333 units slated for global production and only 150 of those coming to the United States, Audi will sell out this final iteration of the V10-powered R8 with ease, despite a $249,900 MSRP before dealer markups. This cost excludes a $1,495 destination charge, a $1,300 gas guzzler tax, and a mandatory $595 for each of the three paint options available. The 150 units will be split evenly between each U, with 50 to be had in Tango Red, with Oz Black, and Daytona Gray respectively. Deliveries in the USA commence at the end of Q1 2023 the Audi R8's final year of production. Verdict: no more encores. As water levels rise around the globe, so too do the number of hybrids and EVs, with this rising tide of electrification swallowing up the finest combustion engines the world has ever known. As we say goodbye to great engine after great engine, the V10 is the next to be submerged by the electric wave. Already a rare and exotic specimen of the automotive world, the V10 has been integral to the success of the R8 through two generations and is a refreshing juxtaposition to Audi's typically calm and composed demeanor. The R8 GT will not go down in history as the fastest supercar, nor one that will attempt Nürburgring records of any sort. Others will be quicker, more brutal. Set stopwatches ablaze both from a standstill and around a circuit, and yet I'm inclined to say that none will feel as special as this. The dynamic steering may not feel entirely natural in very particular circumstances, although it is a remarkable improvement on the genesis of such technology and the DCT may not cling onto gears through corners when the V10 is rung out to redline, but neither of these minor faults is of any consequence here. The R8 GT is too special for these little details to detract from it. As the last encore from the world's best-sounding engine configuration, the R8 GT is the final remnant of a bygone era from when emotion mattered more in a supercar than the numbers its launch control system could help you record. This then is the final goodbye. Not just to a car, not just to an engine, but to an ideology. And as far as final goodbyes go, the Audi R8 GT is possibly the finest we could hope for. When the sun sets on the age of internal combustion, the R8 GT and its mighty V10 will not go gently into that good night. Instead, it will sing. It will howl. And it will rage, rage against the dying of the light.